Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about the Nook tablet from Barnes & Noble. Now this is not even the newest model of the Nook tablet. There was the Nook Color, which was the original sort of cheap Android tablet that while it was running a proprietary version of the Android OS, you could install a sort of third-party version to get a more open version of Android. This is the second one after that, the Nook tablet and it's got 16 gigabytes of onboard storage, but one of the disadvantages of running the sort of Nook OS is that they restrict the amount of space you can use for your personal content. You can download all the way up to that 16 gigabytes pretty much if you download it from the Nook store, but if you want to sideload content, they put a limit on that. So what I did, I installed CyanogenMod, which is a Android ROM, if you will, and that allows you to have full access to all of those capabilities. This device also has a 1 gigahertz uh, Snapdragon processor, I think, and 1 gigabyte of RAM. Uh, the processor is also a dual core, so that's a nice added touch, especially for multitasking and stuff like that. Um, operating around the tablet is pretty fast, uh, even faster than my phone, even though they're both 1 gigahertz dual core processors, so I don't know what's going on there. Maybe it's just the difference in the ROMs because I have not yet put CyanogenMod on my phone yet. Now moving on to the pros and cons of the Nook tablet, and I actually wrote these right here on the device, and I have been trying to make myself use a tablet because I have forever said, well, why do I need a gigantic version of my phone or my um, media player, I guess? Uh, iPod Touch that I was using for a while. Why do I need a bigger version? And I still don't know yet. Uh, I didn't have too much trouble uh, typing these out. And definitely, if you're taking this instead of a laptop, it's definitely a more compact size, although you could just get an Ultrabook. But especially if you're just using it like in your lap and you're, especially if you're trying to use it standing up, this is a much better design. Uh, that's one of the things that I found. But let's go ahead and get to the actual pros and cons that I wrote down. Um, on the Nook tablet. So the first one is that it was free for me. Uh, not for you though. Uh, my dad actually gave this to me because he got an iPad mini as an upgrade. Uh, so I have this now uh, installed Cyanogen mod like I said. And uh, for anyone else who's looking to buy one, if you buy this model, you are going to get a pretty good deal. It's probably under $100 if they even sell them anymore. But if you want to buy an even newer model, those ones are cheap as well because Barnes & Noble is getting out of the color e-reader business. Uh, maybe they'll bring back Color e Ink, I don't know, but they are selling them for pretty cheap and it is a great Android device. Uh, missing GPS though, uh, most of the devices in this price range don't have that, so that is something to keep in mind. Next on my list is that this is a bigger version of my phone, which actually could be a con because it's hard to carry around, but uh, for this it's actually a pretty big version of my phone, I, I mean that's what I can say. It is a tablet. So you do have access to some tablet apps, although on Android it's not as segmented as iOS. But especially some uh, touchscreen games like uh, card games like Uno and other games they've made available where you play online, uh, definitely very good on this screen and would be kind of hard to play on a phone. Um, moving on on the list though, the touchscreen does have some minor use cases like those things I mentioned, the cardboard game apps, uh, drawing apps, but it doesn't have a stylus that works well with it. You could get a stylus, but it's not pressure sensitive. So uh, actually a tablet might be good for that if you got a Galaxy Note or something that supported it. But uh, the Nook tablet definitely does not have those features being an e-reader and that's about it. So uh, it also, not the fact that it's a tablet, but the fact that it's just another Android device I have around, uh, it gives me a place to sort of test out new apps and stuff like that where I don't have to worry about uh, messing up my phone that I have to use every day and it's kind of like a requirement. This is a device that I don't need to worry about if I mess it up. This could be out of service for a month. I wouldn't really care because I don't use it on a regular basis. Uh, most of the time it does just sit there on the charger. So it's a nice test device actually, uh, but I could just get another Android phone. So it's not really a big deal that it's a tablet, but hey, free to me, cheap, cheap Android device. Uh, definitely good for that. Uh, well, now we'll move on to the cons. Uh, I did have some video playback problems, especially when I tried to use Dog Capture to download my podcasts. Uh, it couldn't play any of them back, so I don't know what was up with that. Um, even though I tried another video player, it still didn't work. Uh, but it did do uh, streaming apps like Netflix just fine. Uh, sometimes it was a little lower quality than I had hoped, 
uh, just trying to fill up this gigantic tablet screen over a slower Wi-Fi network or anything like that, uh, not going to be the best thing. But uh, overall, not terrible, just a few minor issues that I'm sure if I got the right app I could fix. But it's really just not worth the pain where if you did have an iPad or an iOS device or even a PC for that matter, it would just work. And this, on the other hand, is not. So uh, the next one is it's hard to carry around. Uh, I guess this kind of lends itself to be a use at home device, but if I tried to carry this, I would rather just carry a laptop because that has so much more functionality and I definitely couldn't carry this instead of a laptop. I would find myself wanting to use a laptop and this, in which case I would just use a laptop because it's less to carry around. Uh, this is, I mean, I can fit it in one hand when I'm trying to do this, but carrying it around, it's just like, where does it go? Like, there's, it, there's no pocket for it to go into. I mean, like a smaller Nook e-reader could fit in your pocket potentially, although it is a little tight. This is much bigger. And especially with this gigantic bezel and all that, not really lending itself well to carrying around. So probably just a using it at home device, I guess. That's how it's been for me. All right, next on the list, uh, no GPS. Yeah, this device does not have GPS. If you got something like, does an iPad mini have GPS? I don't really know for sure, but uh, doesn't have GPS. So if you were planning on having this be like a gigantic GPS or you wanted to use it to look at maps, you could look at maps, but it's not going to find your location based on GPS. You're going to have to be connected to like a Wi-Fi network. And I guess if you did connect to your cell phone on a Wi-Fi hotspot, it would be able to find your location. So it wouldn't be so bad, but uh, it's not going to be that Maps device for you. You're gonna have to find another tablet that supports that. Uh, now moving on to the Android limitations that uh, I found really a problem when I was trying to use this device. Uh, one of the things, I was trying to uh, download one of my encrypted file containers to read it on here. I found many apps that will open encrypted file containers, but if you use a cloud sync service to sync it, you would potentially be able to download that file, but I had trouble opening it with the encrypted file app because if you use a TrueCrypt volume, you can set the file extension to any extension you want. And that was the case with this program as well. So it doesn't set any default file types. So if you're trying to open it from a cloud app like SkyDrive or Dropbox, uh, you're going to have some problems. And I found online there are these things uh, modifying Android manifest files and stuff like that, but they weren't really that detailed with tutorials and I'm not sure if they would actually work. And I just didn't really have the time to mess with that. In which case, with a Windows PC, you can just take file, right click, open with, and you can open it with any program you want. This is just, it's kind of one of those tablet limitations, you know, with a tablet OS, it's made to be easy to use. It just doesn't work out so well for me. And that's why I would just so much rather have a PC. Um, also is the web browsing seems kind of slow. I found this app called Opera, which is kind of based on that uh, Opera web browser that you find on the desktop. And it helped out quite a bit, but it still was just not fast enough loading websites as it was on a PC. Uh, kind of complicated wording there, but basically it loads websites slow. I don't know why. It has a faster processor than even my slowest computer, my netbook has. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, it gets plenty good Wi-Fi speeds, speed test app. So I don't know what's going on, to be honest. Uh, it's really weird. Not sure, again, what's going on. That's why I would just so much rather have a PC because it just works the way I expect it to no matter what PC it is and it's not all this slow website loading stuff. And I guess you're just supposed to use apps, but I, there's some websites that just don't have apps and I can't stand it. Uh, another problem, I guess you can say, is that I can't find a use for this thing. I had to force myself to write this whole thing out on here and it's starting to get heavy in my hands when I'm writing this. And also while I'm shooting this video, I'm, I've been holding it in this one hand this whole time. It, it's wearing me out. I mean, I have been shooting for a little bit longer than that length of this video is, some retakes and stuff, but it's really heavy. I mean, I guess if you're using a laptop PC, it'd be on your lap and it wouldn't be such a big deal, but this isn't really the best use case for setting in your lap, so I just can't find the use for it. And this was sitting there for a week and I have to force myself to use it. I mean. I don't want to force myself to use stuff, but I'm just trying to use this tablet that I got for free and it's not working. So that's about it. Uh, in conclusion, I wrote something here. Uh, 
yeah, I did find that it's great for using at home, uh, especially if you're playing uh, games and stuff like that, and it's rotating. Uh, not really helping me with this video. Maybe I should have locked the rotation or something. Uh, it could never replace a laptop for me. Uh, it couldn't replace my phone either. And there's no devices left for it to replace, and I don't need it. All those other devices can replace this, but this cannot replace those other devices. Uh, maybe a Galaxy Note type phone would be good for me. I'm not totally sure, but uh, definitely not for me. I can't justify carrying around a tablet. That is about it. Thanks for watching. Uh, this has been a little bit longer of a video probably than you're used to, but I'm just getting back into things after taking a little time off. Uh, I'll get back to regular videos pretty soon. Uh, just stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon with another video.